go. Uh, okay, so this is my workplace report presentation. And in terms of work placement, what I did is I was helping Claire Jackson, who is a lecturer for media within the arts department of Chichester College. Um, I was supporting A2 media students with their coursework, with um, through after school lessons basically. And it was approximately five students, and the goal was to help them focus and work as efficiently as possible and, and just get it done with basically. It was very much, um, effectively was an agent of Chichester College in terms of trying to uh, keep them in the course in that sense because they were way past the deadline and they were meant to be sort of um, submitting this now <laughs> as soon as possible anyway. Um, so the reason I I, I could say some more things about the, the, the session actually. It was quite informal and took place in media rooms and typically I'd receive work from a student and I'd really big to look over it and analyze it and see like what's missing, what's not quite matching up with the market criteria, stuff like that. And giving written and discussion based feedback as well as helping with more spontaneous questions. So um, the reason I chose that particular work placement had to do with the fact that I didn't necessarily want to do something production based, which seems strange in a media production course, but I was quite interested. I'm quite interested in the, the, the theories that underlie media, and I felt that I could be quite helpful in uh, helping students with that as well because I've read quite a bit on that. Um, so. The sort of expectations that I was given included basically helping the students writing this, this uh, theoretical sort of essay and um, proofreading, as well as helping Claire with the, the workload because she was she's very very stressed out, but she has to maintain this sort of after school course in order to of course but like support group in order to. Um, get these through, uh, students through basically and she's sort of sacrificing her own time for that partially. Um, so other expectations included flexibility, communication, particular clear kind, um, and also time management, not just for me but also for the students because the sessions were quite brief. And um, personally when I first went in there, in there my initial expectations sort of consisted of unease because I wasn't actually sure what I was effectively going to be doing there. I, I, had, I had a general idea of what I was going to do, but the issue was that I've never actually done an A2 media course of any kind. I was on a different school system and I wasn't quite sure how it was going to be run either. I didn't know that in any particular detail. So it was all quite new to me. and. It, was quite different to what I expected ultimately. Um, so one of one of the first issues that I encountered when I was working there included uh, as I put here the formative nature of how to provide feedback. Basically, um, I wasn't familiar. Like I I don't tend to give feedback written, in written form to students because it's just not something I've done before. It's something quite new to me. So. Um, therefore, I, had, I frequently found that I had to explain my notes that I was making on, and they weren't necessarily clear. And sometimes it was a bit confusing because I was like jotting it down on the paper, and it made sense to me, but it wouldn't necessarily make sense to them because they wouldn't fully understand like, the characters and stuff. And so I was trying to explain that to them as well, partially, and it, it proved to be quite complicated to the point where I was looking at different um, books in order to see what they suggest in order to um, improve that level of communication. So I was looking at uh, Parrot's ideas of simplicity and continuity, which basically is quite like a lecture sort of approach in that you try to categorize 
certain mistakes and try and make, make a pattern out of it and stuff like that. And it was kind of questionable because um, there was quite a diverse range of problems within the actual papers, so I couldn't really like just uniformly say, okay, that's this grammar mistake, that's that grammar mistake, something like that. And it wasn't just the grammar I was focused on, focusing on either. But um, other options I was looking at was brown and race, which suggested um, providing feedback on a separate sheet, which I was finding quite interesting because that would kind of alleviate the need for all these strange notes and underlines and stuff like that that I was doing. And um, so this was pretty much one of my first experiences with like, this form of academic support. So I learned a lot through this process and I found that I really didn't have a clean feedback strategy at this point and I would imagine teachers really do have to research that kind of thing because it's not as easy as it seems uh, commuting clearly. Um, it also reminded me of the, the, actual, the sheer scope of the work that you have to do when you're doing this kind of assessment or not assessment, um, support because you have to basically read through every single essay and um, try and figure out what's wrong with it, where they can improve, what areas lacking. And I think if, if you're only focusing on your own work within an, uh, an academic course, like this course, uh, you don't necessarily, you do kind of realize it, but you don't fully realize it because you're actually doing it yourself. You just kind of acknowledge that, that it's a lot of work. And I found that I could have experimented more with additional, like different methods of feedback throughout that process. Um, second issue I encountered was uh, the standard of the work expected because I, would, I, would, I had to help the students and they had to reach a certain level of understanding of what they were doing like writing that essay. But at the same time I couldn't uh, just do it for them, if that makes sense. I had to mediate that in a, in a way and sort of pick out like where the border is, what kind of balance of like how obvious I should make some of these mistakes and like there's sort of the suggestions for how to improve these mistakes and not just the mistakes. I mean the mistakes are meant to be kind of obvious. Um, so I made quite a few adjustments throughout uh, my work experience. Whilst I was doing this, I was trying like different approaches, like sometimes giving more information about that, sometimes helping them like phrase it, which I thought was a bit excessive. And I, I, eventually I sort of adjusted to this point where I was just like trying to get them to pass, which is I think what I should have done to begin with, which it didn't take long to realize, but it, it was very much a matter of focusing on suitability. And the lecture, like the, the, the work, uh, the, the feedback from Claire that I got was quite positive about this, and she said that my approach was quite uh, sufficient. And uh, I, I, I was focusing on the right thing. I was giving uh, giving them enough to work with, in a sense. And was, I, I found that this was kind of like a transferable skill because it's basically time management. I'm basically managing what they're looking at in their essay in order to see, okay, this is what I need to fix. This is what I'm going to fix. So it's kind of optimizing their time in that session. And oh. Uh, uh, future approaches, I sort of try to get them to take more ownership of their work. It's it's not easy because of the, the, the kind of students you get that are haven't submitted at this point in time. But sometimes there's completely different reasons, so I'm not going to generalize that. But sometimes they're just not really that interested and just want to get it done. And you do have to promote that, but at the same time you also do want to have that analysis in there. You don't really get that unless they, you kind of have them actually thinking about it, actually getting like involved with it. So, um, the third issue I encountered was when a student arrived, like, it was a few sessions in, and eventually a student arrived that didn't actually know where to go from that point, because she had submitted before, but then it wasn't good enough, it failed basically, but then she didn't know what to do with it, because she felt like the, the topic was too broad and everything. So I kind of had to streamline that. And 
in order to do that, I took her to the library and sort of helped with research skills. And that sort of made me realize that that was, wasn't something I was expecting to have to do. It wasn't like something I was thinking I would have. To, I was thinking I was mainly just giving feedback and sort of doing small suggestions and stuff like that. But actually, like uh, that was quite a different experience in a sense because I had to uh, adapt basically. And I also sh uh, showed her the the marking scheme, which uh, was like, which was suggested by Brown and Race. Because it, it helps them student focus, and I found that that is really what you wanted to do. But at the same time, it feels, it feels kind of strange that you're just focusing on making them pass, whereas ideally you would want to like help them with more um, in-depth uh, discussions and stuff like that. So, also. For, a uh, more pervasive ongoing issue was the infrequent nature at which the students actually showed up. It was often a day when I was uh, going over to the session on a Wednesday afternoon and nobody was turning up except me and Claire. So it was just like us two and we're like, okay, what, what were you going to do? There's no students. And I, I found out quite quickly that it's, it's not an easy task to actually help students, especially outside of school time. And that if you arrange anything, you really do have to have some form of contingency plan in order to like, have something to do at that point if nobody shows up. Because if, if you go to a classroom and there's nobody there, what are you going to do? You're not gonna, like, you can't teach them anything, right? So effectively, you always have to have like, a plan B because you're getting paid for your hours and it would be a waste if you don't like, keep proceeding. Um, uh, conclusively, the main issue. Uh, I also found that you get quite a, a variety of students, and it's not all just people that can't be bothered, but there's also people that are there for particular reasons, like they had family problems or something, and then end up um, not being able to submit it on time and getting really, really behind and stuff like that. And that was also quite interesting. Uh, conclusively, the, the main issues were sort of communication standard of the, the standard of work and the time management, both for me and for the, the students. And um, Claire Jackson's feedback was exceedingly positive, actually. Hang on, there we go. I sort of added it as an appendix. Um, it appears that like most of the case we tests have been met, or all of them to some extent. But there, there were some shortcomings in, in some areas, I would say which may or may not have been identified also by Claire, but um, there were issues, I think, in the written communication, which I was previously discussing in terms of having to research just how to do it the best way so that everybody can understand it, even if they're not like, um, well, they're not me, so I need to explain it differently, but it's a sort of, uh, missing a word. Well, it's a matter of communication, anyway. Um, and uh, I, made, I made an effort to improve all of the points that sort of I found were shortcoming whilst I was doing the work experience. And it was interesting to find that I hopefully covered most of everything. And there were quite a lot of transferable skills that I learned throughout this work experience, which include um, a specialized understanding of necessary written communication in the spheres of education, so um, just how to communicate effectively through uh, all those things like that. And also balancing the level of support given to what is expected to be achieved. Instead of trying to just keep helping, keep helping, keep helping, you have to draw the line at some point. And um, the also, the, I kind of maybe realized just how unreliable this branch of work can be in terms of attendance, in terms of what happens, in terms of how adaptive you need to be in order to work in this kind of field as like a, a, a teaching assistant. And uh, it, it, I would say that this form of like understanding of that and like the, the time management aspects are useful in several different kind of professions, including teaching, but also 
paid service-based work or work with clients and stuff like that. And uh, I've more than something that, but um, so some one thing I found is that like in hindsight I, I didn't actually put into this presentation, which I, I was thinking I probably should have been discussing as well, is um, communication with Claire because we were usually meeting like face to face and talking because it's quite local. And um, um, we didn't really have an email communication. I felt like I probably could have communicated more, so I did let her know if I could make it to a session beforehand. But still, it would be during like a school, a working school day, so it wouldn't quite be optimal. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, that's it. Any questions? Um, I have a question. Yeah. Um, you said earlier on that you um, you kind of you didn't realise the extent of what um, Claire went through with students in terms of you, said, you know you said you could sort of you know the way that I took it is that you could sympathise with what um, teachers went through but you couldn't empathise until you actually went through the experience. I would say so. Yeah. Well, it, it, it depends. I mean, it's just. That's just a personal sort of feeling I had when I was doing it because um, I mean you do realize it's a lot of work, but at the same time when you're doing it yourself, you kind of realize just how much work it is. Yeah. I mean, it's easy to say, oh, that's a ton of work, but you know. Yeah. Do think you think that that's something that either affected your performance or would um, would then affect um, your future, like employment or attitudes to jobs um, further on? I wouldn't say it's necessarily a bad thing because it can be quite interesting. I do find it quite a shame that you have to be quite method, like methodological about um, like looking at these things, looking at essays, mm. and you can easily get sidetracked, which is quite dangerous. But um, you can easily get sidetracked. Well, well, <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's how because it's... you're curious. Well, yeah, but it's you kind of have to, have to balance that. At the same time, you, you do want to give the, the students some pointers as to what they could be talking about, like what they're missing. But at the same time, you also just have to get them to pass. <laughs> yeah. Uh, don't cover that. <laughs> In terms of trying to get them to pass, uh, making do you them feel, oh, do, was oh. it you, finding that line between academia and emotional investment into them? Was there an appreciated, did you feel appreciated for the effort you were putting in? Did you feel that they, they reflected that? It depended on the students. Some students were very reluctant, I found. And I didn't really feel very appreciated when trying to work with them, so I didn't really give it all my best. I, I, I don't want to say I'm treating them differently, but there is a certain like relationship you have between the student and the, the teacher assistant, I suppose. Because if, if they don't really have the drive to do anything, then you have to motivate them, of course, but you know, it, it, you need to adjust to their level as well, to some extent, in order to accommodate for their attitude. You can't just keep piling on work, I think. So your, the, the, the appreciation or the level of investment from that student mirrors yours. You will put it. Do you think in it's equal? Open. Is there, a, yeah, is there an equal reflection? Uh, it's what an equal reflection. The amount of energy between expended um, between their motivation and yours on their work. Not necessarily. I think sometimes they give more work than they would give. If that makes sense, I'm sure you felt the same way as teachers. <laughs> no like putting more work into. I'm gonna make a really really cheap uh, hint here. Um, ben was the only one that bought me a present at the end of last year. No, there's two. Which is a nice. Side. Chocolate yeah. bar, pardon? Do you call so? so. <laughs> appreciation would be nice, but I didn't get any presents either. Well. I'll, I'll, I'll edit things. that bit out. <laughs> you don't need to. It's, I mean, it's very much a relationship. You have two human beings working together, right? It's a collaborative effort mm. if you're helping somebody in a support, that kind of support environment. I mean, I think you've got, uh, I mean, you're going, you've just been through your PGC. Now, yeah. so and you're talking to people that like talking about teaching. Yeah. <laughs> so that's slightly kind of, but we also like talking about media. 
And I think yeah, yeah. we need to keep it focused as well to industry um, and um, your, your, your position within the industry and things like that. And I think it's very interesting that the lowest grade that Claire gave you there uh, was for business awareness. We haven't really, she did mention This was, was not really applicable, applicable to the role. But now, I thought that was kind of weird because I do think it is very applicable, mainly because I knew exactly what I was doing and I don't think Claire knew that I knew. Because, I mean, effectively you want these students to pass because that's money, right? We're not evaluating Claire's abilities here, we're evaluating yours, so yeah. very pertinent. It's just, you need to understand what you're doing in, in terms of this huge company called Kitchester College. Mm. You, you're not just going there to help these students, you're actually going there in order to effectively keep them there. It's, it's not the nicest thing to be saying, but that's kind of what it is. Mm -hmm. I mean, you really find that at some point. But how do you engage on that in a business point of view, in terms of the media point of view, not just the theoretical oh, the point, media point as of view. As a student point of view, how, do you, how can you engage on those levels with the course that you are helping out? Um, well, there was a lot of overlap in terms of the subject matter, so I was basically just sharing my knowledge, like I've, and I knew exactly like where the books were that I was looking for when I was encountering certain topics that um, were relevant. But that's still kind of education. I'm not sure. I <laughs> well, I think maybe two level and foundation degree. Yeah. You know, they could be working up to where you want. Yeah, they There's could a lot be of doing what I was doing. There. So you're role modeling a lot of things professionally for them. Did that, did that? Did you think about that as well as the academic? I, I did think about that to some extent, but at the same time, they didn't strike me as students necessarily that would necessarily go that path. They might, but did you discuss that with them directly? It's it's well, it's, it's different because my interests lie predominantly in like the theory aspects of media within this course. I'm not I'm not saying I dismiss the practical part completely. I quite like um, some of it as well, but I think those students are predominantly practically or oriented. They just want to like make things and they consider it sort of like a more productive course. But I didn't really have the window to engage with that necessarily within that um, that support group. But if, do you think it might make a difference if you talked about some of the films you've done and projects you've worked on that instill that influence in them and that excitement and motivation? It could have been. So I'm working. Yeah, we're, we're working it could on have been things. beneficial. Yeah, but. I don't like to think that there's a gap between the theory and the practical stuff. And I don't think a lot of people realize that. <laughs> because um, when you're trying to explain why something works in a certain film, why these characters look like that, and they don't realize it, and they don't realize like the conscious deci decision as to why th this was done that way, you do kind of wonder like why are they studying this course? <laughs> I'm not saying like that in a, in a bad way. It just, well, well that, kind of bad way, that, is, that is level three. They're only going to investigate things to a certain level. Yeah, it's, it's a matter of interest, I think. Mm. I didn't find the feedback to be particularly uh, critical that I could say that in that form. I don't know if I'm allowed to criticize feedback, but... <laughs> I mean, it's it's very easily feedback. spread. I find it quite difficult to uh, glean any more information from it than I had throughout the actual working session. Is that appropriate to say? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's quite interesting in terms of feedback because obviously, if it's essay writing, it's it's written feedback, looking at the criteria, looking at you know formative layout for essay writing at a certain level, you know, academic teaching. Work. But in terms of you know media, yeah, you know, engaging them. That sort of way from essay writing into transforming it beyond the page. If they find essay writing hard, can you know? Can you engage on them beyond essay writing to get them? You know, the essay writing from as a consequence. I attempted to do that in terms of when I was bringing one of the students to the library in order to sort of focus both the research topic as well as sort of like show like evoke some interest and look, look, this was written about that and this appears in that film or whatever. Sort of trying to get a bit more. Close, I guess. I mean, if it was predominantly like heavily film-based, whereas most of their papers seem to have been more about um, uh, 
audiences or they already had like quite a substantial amount of information about what they were looking at. I couldn't really just go and say, hey, look at this film or something and look what are they doing here. Mm, no, I couldn't really do that subject. to the same extent because of the nature of how their essays were and what I was expected to be doing, I found. I might have had some opportunities, but I obviously didn't grasp those. I was just thinking, of, oh, sorry. I was just, if I'm a student who's struggling and I'm coming in to do extracurricular work and I can't do an essay, yeah. do you think that might help to engage them in terms of films they like or things they're interested in and start pulling those things out? I, I tried to sort of, if, if I was seeing an opportunity for more like analysis that actually made, that wasn't like too deep or anything, but in terms of like, how do you say it? Um, I did try and, and think of interesting things that contribute to their essay in a way that might, they might find fun, but at the same time, I didn't think that they necessarily found their essays to be particularly fun. <laughs> so it yeah. was a matter of this is the subject matter I have to deal with, and this is the subject matter they have to deal with as well, and I didn't really. But it's, it's just, it might be that if I come in and I'm not very good at something, or you know, yeah. the element of you, if you tell me that I need to just do more of that. It might compound that anxiety. Oh yeah, yeah. If they were doing something right, I did try and highlight that. Like if I was seeing like this is a really good passage of analysis, I would mention it to them and state like this is what the rest of the essay should be looking like, <laughs> stuff like that. And it wasn't just critical; it was also like mentioning the good parts at times. Though obviously, when you're doing that kind of work and it's it's meant to be constructive, you do kind of fall into that negative sort of. Um, pattern where you find more mistakes and you find good things. I don't know if. Yeah, it's very interesting. Yeah. I think something really valuable to come out of of everything would have been reflection on how other people behave within the industry. So, you had an opportunity to work with a professional. Yeah and reflect on the differences between how you engage that situation and how she engaged that situation. And maybe now you guys could also, you know, the rest of the group could also think about that. There were, there were some significant differences between what I was doing and what, what Claire was doing. You know, when I, when I you know, came up with the initial idea, I thought this is like putting chalk and cheese together. You have, <laughs> the most incredibly different personalities. Um, I mean, I work very closely with Claire Jackson, um, and she's very rock and roll. I can't think of a better term, more technical or professional <laughs> than, than that. But the students have an incredible rapport with her. So she has probably the highest number of students and the high, one of the highest success rates within the college. That's a I wasn't big, aware of that, that is a big, uh, task, very, very challenging, and they are challenging students. So there's something with, within her non-professionalism that makes her excellent for this professional environment. And that goes back to what you were talking That's about, like, hang on, mm. maybe we're talking about the same things, it's not one way or another way. It's very relationship dependent, I would say, teaching. And teaching assistant. Mm -hmm. and that's pretty much what it is. I mean, it is a matter of having a relation. Like, you know what I mean. <laughs> it's a relationship between student and a teacher. Mm -hmm. And if it's informal, it can be informal. All the all the sessions, the, the support sessions, are pretty much informal. And I wasn't trying to necessarily distance myself from the students that much either. I was just trying to do my part, basically. Do you feel that they were clients, customers, or inferiors? Going back to what Venetia was talking about. Uh, what, I, what I mean is, like, below you on the, on the hierarchy of the industry. Well, like I was saying earlier, I kind of almost thought of it as like a service-based thing, because I was effectively doing just that to help them, regardless of who they were. If that makes sense. So it was kind of more like a, a client thing in a sense. Though I wouldn't necessarily want to think of it like that, but I don't know the students well enough. The to college sees them as customers. Yeah, yeah, so I mean, I, I, I can see why they see them as customers, but it's also not a very, it doesn't seem very inspiring, if that makes sense. 
it's it's almost like a teaching factory sometimes. <laughs> It would be nice to engage with the students on like a, like a different level where they understand what you're talking about and they're interested in their topics and they're, they're actually keen on learning more. Whereas them as customers just means they're paying money and they want to pass. How do you feel about that video that we watched before? So the split, what was his name? The Silly the, Breaks. Yeah, does that, does that change your opinion now, do you think, about education versus? Uh, I've had that kind of perspective for a while that I believe that education is not about passing. But I, I don't know if anybody else in this room agrees, but I really disagree with that. Like, so how did you in, try and engage the students on both levels, about passing and about bringing out their creative spirit, or seeing essays as not just academic, or the media field as beyond? Well, I wouldn't necessarily put point academic point. as being passing as well. I find it's quite an interesting area in and of itself, detached from the sort of pressure of grades and marking criteria. But yeah, it was very difficult to balance that because at the same you, you have to you you effectively your goal was to just to help them out passing. I don't I don't want to make it sound like that, but that's kind of what it was. But beyond that, you had to expand beyond that. Yeah yeah um, I made some attempts with that as well. Like I I feel like I'm repeating myself a bit too much. It's an interesting but, question in terms of you know role modeling and mentoring. Beyond uh, just yeah. academic, just beyond just academic. Yeah. I felt that film, uh, if you compared it to working in industry, was talking actually about job satisfaction. You know, it doesn't really matter the money that you make or the qualification that you get or, or anything like that. It's whether you feel valued and you, that you can contribute. And that there were two videos. One of them was yeah. more leaning towards that, I believe. Yeah. Um, and, and I'm going to put this out to, to everybody because I think it would be a nice way to, to round things up. Um, but did you get job satisfaction? And are you more aware of what that job satisfaction would be I, I, in I the must future? Admit, I found it a bit awkward at times, just that scenario of having to work with people that really don't want to work with you necessarily. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying they didn't necessarily want to work with me, but what would be a solution? They had one particular reason to be in that see doing that work yeah. and that was just to pass and I found that to be quite upsetting at times because I really like quite liked some of the research topics. Mm -hmm. How would you resolve that looking forward? Just very quickly. How would I resolve that? Um, oh. Maybe it means going into a different employment yeah, sector. Yeah, a, a different employment sector might be. Such as? Well, I mean, there's different kinds of schools, isn't there? Yeah, absolutely. There's different school. There's schools that fail you. If you so you're still thinking about education. To some extent, yeah, okay. but not just like education. I'm just I'm not fully clued up on what I want to do in the future. I must admit. Luke. Yeah. What was the question? Job satisfaction. How how will you achieve it? What do you? Kind of going at the moment. See how it goes. I think for me it's finding people I like working with. I think that's the most important thing and actually enjoying what I'm doing. Mm. Obviously being able to eat and sleep. So actually money isn't that big a drive. It's, it's no. as long as I can live. Yeah, that's a comfortable working yeah. environment. But as long as I don't get up in the morning and think, oh, I thought we were going to work, then. Mm. But there's reasons for that. There's reasons why you go. It's not just because you're, you know, you're tired or something. Yeah. You're not being engaged. You're not, you know, the teamwork's not there. Or yeah. You know, it's, there are reasons for that. And the place might be brilliant, but it's just not for you. Yeah. And it's just finding those kind of reasons why it doesn't work. Or doesn't yeah. Work. It might just be a period. It might just be a period of time and you go for it and then it comes together, you know, gets better after that. Yeah. It's all those kind of things. So, you know, just your place within the, the higher structure may not be what you need to be. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much, Ben. Thank you.